Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back so today actually we will start discussion of a new chapter of the book we are following okay this is actually chapter number 6 of this book so its title say chapter number 6 the title of that chapter is basically supply demand and government policy government policy see let me clarify first what we are going to discuss here see actually as we told in uh, chapter 2 thinking like economist long back right we told that economist people like us our actually we have two roles one to derive or to establish certain theories to explain those theories uh, we are deriving or we are bringing uh, to explain the world around us more specifically they explain the economic behavior uh, of the people in any society or the behavior of economic agents in a society right so whatever economic activities are happening around us around within that entire society where we live in we bring certain devices certain theories certain uh, certain rules certain principles through which we can explain why consumers behave in a specific manner why producers behave in a, another specific manner and so on like any economic agents like consumer and producer right so those are one sort of the role economist plays another sort of roles economic play economists play as say advisor to the uh, governments or say any society who are whoever is the decisive body a decision making body right who are the uh, concerned authority ok uh, mostly in uh, like our e Indian economy right it is government Indian government right. So, economist play the role of advisor to the government in that role what economist actually do economist actually advise government to follow certain policies or to change the existing policies ok to certain direction so that we can try to change the world change the change the surrounding change the society around us right so two roles economist play two broader roles in in that way we can tell one to to bring theories uh, principles or formulas through which we can explain why something is happening some economic activities are happening how that is happening what are the fundamental factors behind that and so on to explain the world around us ok and another, another role is that economist play as an advisor to the government or decision making authority more specifically it is sometimes it is called policy makers right advisor to the policy makers to take up certain policies so that we can change the world we can change the society we can change the system around us right so last two two three chapters actually uh, we have we have introduced certain theories certain tools certain principles and so on in details more uh, more specifically demand supply mechanism in a market to explain world around us ok or economic activities of the different group of people different group of economic agents right this chapter we are trying to uh, discuss or we are going to discuss the other role of the economist. So, economist as policy makers or advisor to the policy makers right and of course in doing that uh, we will use only the demand supply mechanism tools of demand and supply forces uh, using which we have established market equilibrium prices, uh, market equilibrium uh, quantity and so on right. We will use only those equilibrium uh, the demand supply mechanism, demand curve, supply curve and so on right. Using whatever knowledge we have learned, we have gained so far in economics, using those knowledge we will try to understand how uh, economist 
as a policy makers as an advisor to the policy makers can try to change the world around us or more specifically economic world around us right okay so uh, see uh, let me try with an uh, start with an example so suppose um, how how we can or policy makers how we can influence as a policy makers how we can influence and government mechanism or government activity or or market activity right let me clarify there are different types of markets in economics actually we will explain or introduce each of those markets say like competitive market monopoly market oligopoly market monopolistic competitive market and so on so many different types of markets are there in economics okay we are yet to introduce each of those markets exhaustively or quite elaborately okay but for the time being uh, let us tell by competitive market why what we refer okay in any case after uh, some time uh, maybe after 3 4 lectures we will exclusively establish what are the what are the properties of a competitive market or what's uh, what uh, properties on if one market satisfy then that market will be termed as a competitive market for the time being let us try to uh, try to introduce competitive market with a common sensical understanding okay so what are those okay competitive market okay competitive market competitive this terminology is telling that perhaps lot of competition exists in that in that kind of market right yes that is true in this market very large number of sellers are there also very large number of buyers are there okay and each of the sellers and each of the buyers they are competing each other so uh, more specifically say buyers are competing among themselves okay to get some commodity what they are they wish to or they desire to get okay what is there in the market okay and similarly suppliers they are competing among their themselves that each supplier what is uh, his or her uh, objective or goal some goods or service he or she has produced right that he wants to sell in the market right so they want some customer of that product or their service what they are willing to sell in the market right so suppose when i i i am a rice, rice producer right so i produce rice and i i brought that rice in the market rice market right so it may not be the case that in fact in competitive market i am not the only producer of rice so many uh, other producers also are there in the market who parallelly who, who also produce rice and came with with their products production rice in the market and who are also trying to Uh, get some customers for their product right so obviously as a rice seller i have to compete with the other sellers of the rice okay to get some uh, customer of my product right so in this way in the competitive market large number of buyers are there large number of sellers are there and they are competing each other uh, to to attain their uh, objective right so for the time being uh, this 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 phenomenon are enough for the competitive market but the competitive market has some additional phenomenon other than this large number of buyers and sellers that we will, we will clarify or we will discuss uh, quite exhaustively when we will discuss competitive market itself sometimes later as we told so why i am telling this competitive market so so far we have told no that one demand curve is there one supply curve is there market demand curve one market supply curve is there through mutual uh, matching or mutual uh, matching of these two opposite forces demand and supply equilibrium price in that market is determined and equilibrium quantity also is determined right so uh, when we are telling that mutual matching of uh, demand and supply of course market demand and market supply right as we clarified earlier okay so in that way so uh, whatever we have discussed that demand supply market mechanism and all all are uh, assuming that market is competitive so the, uh, in economics if some competitive market is there by default if nothing specifically mention about the existing market or characteristic of the market then by default it is competitive market when we are discussing something within a market where that market is not competitive in nature then we will exclusively mention 
that this is a monopoly market or this is a oligopoly market something like that okay if we don't mention anything by default competitive market is there okay so we are discussing whatever we have discussed demand supply mechanism whatever we have discussed we have discussed that in a competitive market setup okay and here also that supply demand and government policy when uh, economists are going to uh, introduced or prescribe or advise certain policies to the policy makers to the decision making authority within a society right assuming that that societal economy uh, is an uh, within which this policy is going to uh, we are our policy makers are going to apply these policies that market is competitive okay so in that way uh, so so far whatever we have discussed let me clarify again it's it's the under the background of competitive market okay because we did not mention anything exclusively about the market structure so by default competition is there okay so suppose okay so so far government was not intervening into them uh, into that market and since the uh, market was allowed to freely operate okay and there is a demand curve and there is a supply curve so suppose this is the demand curve this is the supply curve this is the market demand curve this is the market supply curve and as a result this is the equilibrium price of course so in demand curve and supply curve we are drawing here we are measuring price in the horizontal axis quantity demanded and quantity supplied both we are measuring price in the vertical axis i am sorry price in the vertical axis and quantity demanded and quantity supplied both are measured in the horizontal axis right in that way this is the demand curve this is the supply curve and this is the equilibrium price determined in that market say o p star amount of price for each commodity each unit of the commodity uh, at which uh, that each unit of the commodity will be transacted and this much of say o q star amount of commodity will be transacted in that market right that is the equilibrium when we tell that e is the equilibrium it, its meaning is that or we are conveying these two messages what is the equilibrium price and what is the equilibrium quantity in that market right okay now suppose this price this price whatever the equilibrium price level is determined through the uh, free uh, free operation of demand supply force in that market that those demand supply force are represented by this market demand curve and that supply force is represented by this market supply curve right okay so now suppose if uh, so suppose this is a market uh, a beautiful example is there in your book say suppose this is the market for ice cream okay and op star is the equilibrium price which is determined by the pre movement of demand supply mechanism in that market without any uh, government or any authorities intervention okay into the market now suppose uh, customers of that product say ice cream right customers of the product feels that this equilibrium price is too high okay see usually you know customers it's always in customers interest or instinct is to give uh, as less price as possible right i am a customer if price was say 100 rupee per kg of some commodity okay uh, visa is when it becomes 90 rupee per kg i will be happy only right so customers always desire less price and for the producer it's the opposite uh, it is always if price increases producers will be more happy or uh, uh, increment in price will incentivize producer in that way also we can tell alternatively right so suppose in this market no customers are feeling and then no no this price whatever the equilibrium price in that market it is too high okay and it will be good that if government or uh, decision making authority in that society if they can uh, try to intervene into the market and try to reduce the price little bit okay alternatively producers in this market no they can also think that no no this price is too less okay and it will be good that if the decision making authority and that uh, intervene into the market and do something so that price uh, increases little bit right this kind of two opposite groups opposite groups i am telling that because demand and our uh, customers and sellers they are basically uh, looking for the one party is trying to purchase another party is trying to sell in that sense i am telling opposite group okay okay so say so suppose uh, these two groups right each of those group has some representative they have some so say we can think of that customer organizations okay or, or, or 
buyers uh, buyers organizations okay so they they make a group they make an organization and they are lobbying to the policy makers or lobbying to the government no sir you try to uh, reduce little bit uh, price right similarly sellers may may have a organization okay and they have some representative they also go to the government and they tell sir please try to increase the price little bit okay for some mechanism which is under the purview of that decision making authority right in that way they can happen so government can intervene into this market okay now uh, how government can intervene into this kind of market so so far it was a competitive market there were no government or no any uh, decision making authorities intervention was there in, inside the market into the market and that is why when we are telling that this is the demand curve this is the supply curve with free mechanism of demand and supply this this much of equilibrium price is determined in that market this much of equilibrium quantity is determined in that market and all without any government intervention right now government can intervene either this side or that side right government can bring some policy into the place so that price is determined little bit away from this equilibrium price maybe above maybe below whatever it is little bit away okay government similarly can intervene into this this side also quantity right government can say suppose this was the equilibrium quantity right determined in that market right but government may want to no 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 uh, this uh, within our society say suppose this is petroleum right petroleum is a scarce commodity because we have we have to, we, we are largely dependent on import from the mostly that opec countries middle east countries and other other opec members right so it's a uh, precious commodity to us so suppose government wants the everybody every uh, each customer of the petroleum products within the society should consume little bit less okay so how government can do okay there is a mechanism called rationing rationing okay rationing means imposition of quantity restriction so suppose government is telling that not more than this amount not more than this amount say green color not more than this amount of petroleum will be allowed to be transacted into the market okay so that kind of uh, through some kind of rationing mechanism or that kind of some sort of quantity quantity restriction mechanism government can intervene into the market through the quantity side government can intervene into the price side also say maybe through taxation or imposing some uh, legal upper bound or lower bound on price right so in this chapter or whatever is the in this syllabus in this course we will discuss only the government intervention into this direction price dimensions or price directions right either through imposition of taxes or through imposition of some upper or lower bound of on the price okay we will discuss that so quantity restriction mechanism with rationing or some similar kind of principle we are keeping aside of our syllabus of this course okay and in fact that is not there uh, in the book we are following in fact the chapter 6 of the book we are following right okay so say so two types of let us take a one new phrase so two types of as we told so far two types of government inter intervention can be there in the market more specifically in the price dimension of the market one is some uh, some upper or lower limit imposition of some upper or lower limit on price on market price okay and two through imposition of some tax imposition of tax or subsidy you know what is subsidy tax means you also government is collecting money on the basis of say consumption or transaction okay per unit of transaction say for instance okay so, there are so many other mechanisms or other policies of uh, taxation mechanism may be there okay so suppose per unit so uh, say suppose uh, every unit of the commodity whatever is transacted in the market 
every unit say 2 rupee of the tax has to be given to the government. Okay. So, that kind of taxation mechanism it is basically government is extracting money from the economic agents who are operating within the society either customers or the producers. Right? Subsidy is just the opposite, government is incentivizing, government is giving some money. Okay? So, per unit of transaction, okay? so perhaps government is giving 1 rupee to the producer or to the customer. Okay, so, the subsidy is the just implication of the if government Im, impose or introduce certain subsidy mechanism, it will be exactly the we can think of subsidy is just the negative tax, right. So, we will not discuss both of them in this course, okay. we will discuss only tax okay. and if you understand after the imposition of the tax what kind of implication will be there on the equilibrium price quantity mechanism in the market, okay, you can easily understand if alternatively if you impose subsidy what kind of implication will be there. Okay. So, we will discuss one of them either tax and subsidy we will discuss only tax one of them okay. and from that you can easily understand if alternatively subsidy is imposed what kind of implication will be there in the equilibrium of the market in the market right. So, so, so as I told let me clarify again through the uh, towards the price dimension okay, government can intervene into two ways one that imposition of some legal upper or lower limit of the price okay, that is called quantity restriction on price. Okay, sometimes back we told that quantity restriction, restriction in the quantity axis, quantity side through rationing mechanism or some sort of that kind of mechanism, right. Here we are telling that quantity restriction on price, price cannot be more than that or price cannot be less than that like that, okay. Some upper or lower bound, imposition of some upper or uh, lower bound on the price, okay, that is this thing, okay, and imposition of the tax. Okay, another another mechanism. So let us first discuss that upper and lower bound imposition of so so basically okay so suppose say, as usual we are measuring quantity demanded quantity supplied in the horizontal axis price in the vertical axis and suppose this is the market demand curve and this is the market supply curve without that is the free market and competitive market where we, without government any intervention or before government intervention. Right. So, so actually free market mechanism operation through free market mechanism, okay. This will be the equilibrium price, this means O P star will be the equilibrium price, and say O Q star will be the equilibrium quantity in that market, right. Now, suppose government is telling that no, 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 price cannot be above this level, say red color, I am telling within this market price cannot be above this red color or price cannot be above say this blue color something like that. Okay. So, uh, when I uh, we are telling that price cannot be above a threshold level that means we are fixing the upper limit of the price right. So, that upper limit is called price ceiling. price ceiling. So, look at here we are sitting in a room right. So, that roof we called ceiling right and ground we called floor right. So, when government is imposing some upper limit of the price that is called sometimes called price ceiling because it is upper limit ceiling. Okay. And when government impose some introduce or impose some sort of lower limit of the price that is called price floor. Okay. So, nothing to memorize floor this terminology floor will tell that it is the lower limit, ceiling this terminology will tell that it is the upper limit. right? So, now when government is imposing, so we will discuss each of these price floor, price ceiling both of them. right? So, suppose, suppose say government is going to say first let us discuss say price ceiling, price C E I L I N G, price ceiling. Right. So, suppose price ceiling means upper limit of the price, right. So, suppose again as usual quantity demanded, quantity supplied are measured in the horizontal axis, price in the vertical axis, and suppose this is the demand curve, this is the supply curve, or more specifically free market demand curve and supply curve, okay, before government intervention. Suppose government is telling that this is the price ceiling, say OP1 or no O P C I am telling C C for ceiling okay O P C is the price ceiling. 
So, OPC is the price ceiling government is imposing within this market means government is telling that nobody within this society within this market is allowed to set a price above this OPC level per unit of the output or per unit quantity transaction of that commodity for which this demand curve and this supply curve for which this market we are discussing here. Here, when this is OPC is the price ceiling, right? We can think of two ways. If there is no government intervention through this kind of price ceiling, what will be the equilibrium price? OP star is the equilibrium price level, right? After government intervention OPC, that is the price ceiling, what will be the equilibrium price? Still equilibrium price will be OP star because price ceiling means legally allowed upper limit of the price. So, this is the upper limit. Okay? So, if I want to set any price above PC then that is not legally allowed. Okay? But if anybody wants to set the price below that upper limit it is allowed. right? So, my point is without this price ceiling government imp imposition of this price ceiling whatever was the equilibrium price even after this price ceiling imposition of this price ceiling equilibrium price is same op star so this kind of price ceiling does not have any implication on the equilibrium of the market this will be the steel equilibrium this e point so this kind of price ceiling is called non binding price ceiling non-binding price ceiling, non-binding price ceiling, C E I L I N G price ceiling, non-binding in which sense? Let me clarify, government is imposing some sort of price ceiling which does not have any implication on the uh, uh, market equilibrium. Okay? So, alternatively, with price ceiling and without price ceiling, with price ceiling of kind of government intervention and without any kind of government intervention equilibrium is the same. So, that is why this kind of uh, price ceiling is called non-binding price ceiling. Alternatively, suppose this price ceiling is this given by this red line say P C 1, O P C 1 is the price ceiling. right? That means what? Nobody is allowed to set or transact the commodity in the market in any price above OPC star, OPC 1. Okay? So, this price ceiling is what look at here, if there is no price ceiling in this market, equilibrium price will be OP star. After this imposition of this price ceiling, right, equilibrium will be this, this OPC 1 only. Why OPC 1? Because nobody is allowed to set any price above than the OPC 1. right? So, so this will be the equilibrium in that case. So, this kind of price ceiling look at here have an, uh, has an implication on the market equilibrium. right? Without this price ceiling mechanism is the equilibrium, after this price ceiling mechanism equilibrium price actually whatever the ceiling price is set by the government. Okay? So, when government actually set price ceiling, what is the target? Now, you can, you can ask yourself, you will get the answer setting this kind of so first this kind of price ceiling is called binding price ceiling binding price ceiling okay binding price ceiling binding in which sense binding in which sense this ceiling has an implication over the equilibrium without ceiling equilibrium will be something with ceiling equilibrium will be something else in that sense it is the binding so, when this kind of binding price ceiling is imposed on a market, uh, what is the target? Perhaps target is to give some kind of relief to the customers because producers always try to set price above no and free market mechanism actually set uh, in this market is setting this is the price. right? But customer perhaps the kind of story we told that both the parties are lobbying to the government to intervene. This kind of price ceiling perhaps when government is imposing, uh, government is more uh, motivated or more convinced rather by the uh, consumers group that try to reduce the price little bit and that is why effective price becomes say this uh, green distance. 
effective price becomes this distance uh, by the imposition of the price ceiling, right. So, exactly same way when government is imposing price floor, suppose this is the uh, say as usual uh, quantity demanded, quantity supplied are there in the horizontal axis, price in the vertical axis. Suppose this is the market demand curve, this is the market supply curve, okay. And suppose this is the price floor F, P F, F floor from floor F. So, without any intervention in this market, this will be the equilibrium. So, this is O, this is P star, O P star will be the equilibrium price, okay. So, when this is the O P F is the price floor, that time is what? Price floor means O P F is the legal minimum of the uh, price of that commodity in the market. So, nobody is allowed to set any price below that, okay. So, anybody, everybody is allowed to set any price above that. Okay. So, with this kind of price floor, okay, there is no implication on the market equilibrium price. Alternatively, in other words, we can tell that without price floor and with price floor, equilibrium price is same. Okay. So, that is why this kind of this is called a non-binding, non-binding price floor. Alternatively, if this is the price floor, say suppose this red color line is the price floor, say suppose P F 1. So, that is the legal minimum boundary of the price, right. So, nobody is allowed to transact of that good into that market at any price below this level O P F 1 level, right. So, definitely without that price floor mechanism, O P star will be the equilibrium with that price floor mechanism definitely this will be the equilibrium price O P F 1 of O P F 1 ok this will be the equilibrium. So, it has an implication over the equilibrium price right. So, this is definitely binding price floor ok. So, price ceiling price floor are <coughs> some mechanism through which government can intervene into the market equilibrium price. Of course, only when whatever it is whether price floor or price ceiling it should be binding kind of thing right then government can effectively intervene into the market. Let me clarify one thing like the when government is setting the binding price ceiling the target is to give some sort of relief to the customers exactly the opposite here right binding price floor is to give some little bit more price to the producers. Okay. So, producers class so exactly the story what we have narrated perhaps there government is more influenced uh, by or more convinced by the uh, producers or sellers group. Okay. So, that government is in, in, intervening into the market through some binding price floor as a result sellers are getting little bit more price than the price what they could otherwise get if government do not intervene that price is the free equilibrium price free market equilibrium price OP star right. So, let us stop here. Okay, with this price floor price ceiling mechanism. Now, we will discuss that after this price floor price ceiling mechanism, uh, what kind of implication is that we, we already get a sense from this two diagram, but we will clarify those uh, in a, uh, much more elaborately in the next uh, set of lecture. Okay, let us stop here.